former pharmacist, author, and transformation coach. And today I have a really special guest and I am genuinely so excited about this topic because I feel like more people need to know about it. It's one of those tools and the concepts that I think everybody can relate to. And I'm so excited to introduce this incredible woman. Marilee Smith is an organizational culture and leadership coach. And I just cannot wait for her to share her wisdom today. So if you want to go ahead, Marilee, and just introduce a little bit more about yourself and your work. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Christina, so much for having me. I'm like, I'm beyond excited to be here. Um, yeah, so you already introduced me. I, I'm an organizational, I like to say, culture coach. And what that means is I'm very passionate about helping organizations create healthy, high-performing workplaces where people actually like coming to work, what they do, um, who they do it with, um, you know, and, and they go to a place that really gives them energy. You know, we spend a lot of time, our, our work lives and our personal lives are not one and the same anymore. They're, they're very much you know, merge together. And I think that that's so, so important. So that's been, um, that's definitely been my work and passion up to this point. Um, so this, <laughs> we set this up a while back, but this has definitely been a pivotal moment for me. I, and I use the word pivot because I, <laughs> I actually went out this morning. I was, I was reminded of the old friends episode with Ross and they're moving the couch up the steps and he's like screaming pivot, pivot, pivot. And I had to go watch that cause it just kept ringing in my head. And I was like laughing out loud at like three this morning when I was watching it. Um, but this is a very pivotal day for me because I actually have made a big decision um, shifting my business a bit. I'm not completely saying I wouldn't work with an organization because I think that's still important. But at the end of the day, um, when I'm working with a team and organization, I always find that I, I end up coaching individuals from uh, one on one basis about, um, you know, what their strengths are, where they can be even stronger. And truly, that's what lights me up. And I love it. And I just really want to step into it. And a big, huge, huge piece of my work is um, disrupting drama. Yeah. yeah. Who can't relate to that? Exactly. <laughs> it, it's funny when I say that, I'll say, oh, I'm a drama disruptor. People are like, what is that? What, what, are you, what, what do you mean? I have that. Like, we all have it. We're human beings, right? And I love what you said the other day when we were talking about how it, drama really shows up in multiple areas of life. So can you go into a little bit more about that, like where it might show up for a person? Yeah, you know, right. So the drama, that's a pretty heavy word, but what does that mean? And it means it actually can show up in many, many different ways, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether, you know, we're in a parent boosters uh, group at school, um, whether I'm, you know, working on a team and we're, we've got different personalities or we're just not on the same page. A lot of times in organizations, it's miscommunication. I didn't take the time to slow down and clarify. So people start making assumptions and then it creates all this unnecessary negative energy and drama that can really just suck things down and keep us from being unproductive. Um, so it's definitely, like I said, it's in the personal life. It's in the, it's in the work life. Um, I get, we, I think we can all relate to it. And Again, we're, it's natural. Um, you know, what I love about all of this work is there's just there's so much biology and physiology behind it. You know, um, and it's, it definitely ties into the concept of emotional intelligence, which I can go more into. But it's about when we get frustrated with something, someone, a situation, we we get triggered, and that's a very I love that word because it's just so true. We get triggered into this state of drama or conflict, whether it's with other people, whether it's within ourselves, and it's like the past of no, the point of no return. Once it happens, like our body is like it's the survival of the fittest, the caveman days, right? Like so we're going out, it's going out, sending out these signals to protect ourselves, so we automatically go in the good old fight, flight, freeze, or another way to say is also appease sometimes we just um, submit and don't really step into our power too. So. Yeah. so I'm sure you see a lot of like people getting defensive, like you said, with those survival mechanisms that like someone gets triggered and they go into that pattern that they probably run for 20, 30, 40 years, right? Yeah, I'm sure you see that a lot. So yeah, and I resonate so much with this because just a little background about like how all of this fits into transformation. For me, I saw that I was the victim a lot of the time in my relationships, like early in my 20s. And it wasn't until I went to this personal development seminar that that actually came through for me, that I was being a victim. And so I, I really want to go into these uh, the different drama triangles, the empowerment dynamic and the drama. What's the other name? <laughs> uh, the DDT, the Dreaded Drama Triangle. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So if you could go into more about that, I I think everybody can really relate to how we, like you said, when we get triggered, we kind of fit into one of these roles and how to get out of that. Um, sure. So, and I and I don't even know that we've even brought that to light to this point. Just the, the, just the title of the drama and triangle and the empowerment dynamic. So again, when we get triggered, whether it's at the in the grocery store line, somebody cuts us off in traffic, whatever that looks like when we do get so it's all about what we're focusing on like is where our energy goes right yeah. so what we focus on energy goes um i just recently heard that quote and it's, it really has stuck with me so if we're really in that more reactive mindset once we're triggered we can fall into and i'll just have my little hand here uh, of this dynamic called the the dreaded drama triangle the drama triangle which was actually um first um found it and coined by Dr. Stephen Cartman back in 1968. He was a psychiatrist. And the idea is that you've already started using some of the labels. So there are three roles in this drama triangle that we can play at any one time. We can play it with other people that can be in these in this dynamic. And quite honestly, a lot of times we're in it ourselves. Um, and so those roles, so you already went there, you used the role, you used the word victim. Yeah. And so at the very um, heart of the drama triangle, um, it, that's exactly what that role is. And that's really about we don't feel like we have choice. We don't feel like we have any power. Um, it's, it, you know, just to put some feelings and behaviors as a person who feels like, again, they have no power. What was me? The world's out to get me. You know, I'm going to start blaming other people. They really don't want to take accountability or ownership. And that really doesn't even necessarily mean that that's even at a conscious level. That's just how those behaviors are showing up for them. Yeah. And as you can imagine, you know, that's not a, and I, I will use the word a lot of feelings and emotions. Like, how are you feeling when you're in that state? You know, that that's that's not a great place to feel or be. So in order to also um, be the victim, there has to be the, the, another role, which is called the persecutor. And so the persecutor, um, again, can certainly be a person, but it also can be a situation. So it's actually the problem for the victim, if you will. Um, so that role is really somebody who is going to, um, they like to be right. They don't want to, they don't want to be wrong. They like to dominate. They like to judge. They like to make assumptions. They might criticize you. They might put you down. Um, so that's the persecutor. So again, so for somebody to be a victim, there has to be some sort of persecutor in this dynamic. And then the third role was always an interesting role. <laughs> the third role is that's the role that is the fixer, right? That's yep. the role that doesn't want any of this um, drama going on. And they certainly don't want the victim to have to take any accountability and ownership. You know, they're going to be there just to take care of everything and take care of them. And so a lot of times I like to say to people, what would you call that role? A lot of times people will say the enabler. Yeah. It's actually um, the rescuer. So again, the rescuer actually can be a person, but it also could be certainly, um, you know, anything that's going to alleviate the pain, the problem in the moment, more from a, for, from a, like a symptomatic fix. So it could be like, I had a really crappy week and you know what, I'm just going to lay on the couch all weekend and do nothing. And that's fine if that's a choice that you make. You know that that's where you're there and you can probably pull yourself out of it. But that, those are some of those consistent behaviors. Or, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a couple of drinks tonight, you know, and stay out late. Whatever it is that you are kind of putting a Band-Aid on to alleviate from the problem. So, so that's the dynamic itself. It, the interesting part of all of it is that they are all rooted in the um, feeling of fear. They're yeah. all, they all fear losing something. So the victim, of course, fears like having to take accountability or choice and that persecutor fears, you know, actually becoming a victim <laughs> and the rescuer, of, you know, again, consciously or subconsciously feel fears not being needed or not being wanted. Um, so it can be quite a vicious cycle. Um, and when I was first introduced to it about 10 years ago, it really resonated to me on a personal level. I was like, ooh, I see a lot of people in my life um, in that, in that, including myself, in that dynamic. And wow, like, oh, I don't want to be there anymore because it's not a great place to be. So I just want to pause right here because I feel like I love the way that you described it. And I, I know that there are people out there right now who are resonating and who you know, with me, even in my family, I was the victim, my mom was the rescuer, my dad was the persecutor. So that created that vicious cycle. And, you know, I, I love that this correlates with the David Hawkins scale, which I wanted to just quickly bring in because it you just said the key word, it's operating out of fear, right? Mm -hmm. So David Hawkins was a researcher who, who 
went and muscle tested people and could see their different levels of consciousness. So there's this consciousness scale and it's from zero to a thousand and everything below 200, which was the level of courage was operating from fear. So it kind of correlates to that dreaded tra yeah. drama triangle that you're talking about. And that critical point, which was courage, everything above that level, people started to go into this empowered state, which is what we're going to go into next, that empowerment dynamic. And I just think that it's important for us to realize when these things are operating in our energetic field, and we might not even be aware of it. So I love the title of this Facebook lie that it's emotional intelligence because it really does come down to awareness. And we're, when we're aware that we're operating in these dynamics and we see where we're at on that emotional scale, we're able to shift and go into this empowerment dynamic, which is really where the power is. And I love how you, you referred to the victim as really being powerless because that's how I felt, you know, you're, you're the victim. You're like, everything's happening to me. And so how do we help people shift out of that? So if I just wanted to pause and say, I love the way that you described it. And um, so, yeah, the next step would be the empowerment dynamic. Yeah. And thanks so much for bringing in the David Hawkins scale, because that's, you know, <laughs> as I was introduced to this work, it really helped ch change me as a person personally and professionally, because I really had that awareness. But I'm constantly like going deeper and evolving the work and the emotional, um, that emotional scale or that, um, uh, what scale consciousness um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just tying it to the emotions like that's really helped me truly understand like okay really feeling into that and you're right when is there so the opposite <laughs> so there's an antidote there there's a way out and it's called the empowerment dynamic and so we actually upend the triangle so dr carpin definitely is the person the founder of the dreaded drama triangle um but there's a gentleman who has a book out there is two books actually now um uh david uh emerald uh, and his book was the original book was called The Power of Ted, not Ted Talks, but it was called The, um, the Empowerment Dynamic is what Ted stands for. Mm -hmm. And he recently wrote a book now also. Um, so that's more told from a personal point of view. It's now also transforming three vital questions to transforming workplace drama. But it all it's all about how do we get out of that? And we flip into the to the empowerment dynamic. And so in the empowerment dynamic, the, basically what the what the roles in the, there, so there's three roles, just like the drama triangle, is it is these roles of more of a of an empower, empowering state. So you're definitely going above that, that level of courage if you think about that scale. So yeah, the yeah. opposite of somebody who is a victim, and we've already talked about all those behaviors, the opposite role of that at, at the point of our, at our empowerment dynamic is somebody who's a creator. And that's really all about being at choice, knowing that I always have a choice on how to um, handle or respond to um, a, a certain situation or just my own life situations and challenges that, that arise. And so that's really somebody who asks themselves, like when maybe they get triggered, but I might say, okay, what's really going on here? What do I really want out of this situation or out of this relationship? So they're really kind of taking where I'm like, oh, woe is me. Like, I don't even want to deal with that here. I'm going to step into that, even though it might feel uncomfortable yeah. to yeah. say, what's going on? What do I really want? The opposite of a um, persecutor is somebody who's a challenger and what I love about the challenger is that this is somebody who's still going to be, so the persecutor is going to judge, criticize, they're going to definitely tell you what they think, but it's all about your intent. The challenger is going to come from a place, they're still a truth teller, but they're going to come from a place of, I really want to help you or I want to help the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was a big aha for me because we all have our default roles that we can fall into the drama triangle. Um, and mine is persecutor. I'm not, proud of it, <laughs> but I'll own it. That definitely can happen for me. So the challenger, um, so and then that's how you start making some of these shifts. You recognize that this is happening and you start yeah, asking yeah. yourself some of these pivotal questions, if you will, I'll use that word again. Um, and then the opposite of a rescuer, so somebody who wants to fix and do it for people, is somebody who's a coach. And, and a true coach is somebody who is going to really be a thinking partner with you, really help you self-reflect, ask some really good questions to help get you unstuck and to gain some insight. Now, you again can be in this dynamic with other people, but you can also just be in it with yourself. It takes practice, but you can also be your self coach. Um, so if, if a situation is coming up, like I got sick and I have some sort of like, my husband went through cancer a couple years ago, you know, it's like, 
all right, I could be like, this is persecuting me, or we could be like, okay, what is this here to teach us? Like really mm -hmm. kind of unpacking that internally for ourselves too. Um, so it's a really, it's truly powerful once you can start making that shift. Mm -hmm. Um, we're always going to fall into the drama triangle because it's we're human beings. Um, but there's definitely a better way of um, responding to situations and, and, and approaching life in the world. So, so uh, you describe all of that, how you use the word respond versus react, probably yeah. in that the DBT, it's more of, you know, reactivity, I'm guessing. Yeah blame yes. a lot of background wrong. so so would you say that the first step to shifting is really awareness that's what it sounds like yeah absolutely um and if it's okay i'll just share a little bit about my mm -hmm. journey before this so and that and that's why i love that we use the title emotional intelligence um so i went and got my master's it was a career change for me early 2000s and i'll tell the story quick but um at, at Carlo University here in Pittsburgh. And it was interesting because when I went for my master's, every paper I had to write, it would be, you know, like a theory paper, but then they'd be like, okay, well, how are you feeling when you're writing this paper? Or how are you feeling when you were working on this project? I'm like, why are they asking me this? <laughs> <laughs> and it was all about self-reflection. And then I started like getting aware of like, okay, when I wasn't feeling so great, I put the paper off or I, you know, maybe didn't handle a situation so effectively. And then I got introduced to this concept of emotional intelligence. And that's all about, you know, just us being really aware of who we are internally and our emotions and how they impact us and that's huge to know first because again it very similarly very much correlates to what we were just talking about with the drama triangle it, re, it impacts how we show up to others right on how we're feeling inside so that was the first aha like light bulb went off for me about probably about 14 years ago and i was like oh ooh. then i think back to when i was actually a leader in my early 20s i'm like oh yeah i didn't handle that situation very bad very good um because i just didn't have that emotional awareness uh so that was the first piece of it and then probably about five or six years later is when i was introduced to the to the drama triangle and the empowerment dynamic work and that just helped me deepen that even more yeah, yeah. that's amazing so if, if you could sum up um, emotional intelligence in in one or two sentences for somebody who's never heard that word before so it's a level of awareness so it's it's really focusing inward and just being aware. Is that what you would say, or how would you describe that to somebody? Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Well, there's several levels of emotional intelligence, and I won't go into all of them. But the very very first one is definitely the self awareness piece, and that's absolutely. So if we think about, there's all sorts of studies out there just. Um, emotional intelligence versus IQ in the workplace. And so often, you know, when we're at work, we're, we are process oriented, we're taskmasters, you know, we're, we're focusing on the technical professional skills that we bring to the workplace. But in order for us to make sound decisions and to work with people effectively, we have to really understand who we are as people and what's going on emotionally so we can effectively get that work done through other people and be able to um, collaborate. And so that's the, that's the sex. So it's the self-awareness and it's probably the social awareness are the two key pieces that that I would highlight today about emotional intelligence. Uh, but there's all sorts of studies that show that um, actually the higher the, the emotional intelligence you have, the more successful, so it outranks IQ, if you will. Wow. Um, and, and the cool thing about emotional intelligence is that it's um, it's rewiring your brain, right? It's it's up, it's upgrading. Um, David talks in his book about our internal operating system. We have our own human, and so it's really about rewiring, you know, old patterns and things that have happened earlier in our life, and we can control that. Where IQ, they always say, is very it's very static. Um, so, wow, wow. Yeah, I'm learning so much by listening to it, and it's interesting how a lot of your work correlates to a lot of the things that we've done as well. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So like what specifically, and I know that you have a new program coming out, um, it's in the works. So what modalities do you use in your programs to really help people, individuals, to shift from that victim, persecutor, drama triangle to that empowerment dynamic? Or just tell us a little bit more about that. I'm really excited for you. Yeah. Um, 
Thank, yeah, and thanks for bringing in the program. It's definitely in the works. So it's again, this was a big change or decision for me just in about a week and a half ago to really step into this. So it's um, I've got the skeleton pieces of it mapped out, you know, but I, it's definitely similar to when I work with organizations and teams. So the first level of it is really I go back to the word awareness. So if you're not aware of any of these concepts or they're new to you, like they were to me at first, it really takes some time and it's taking some time to really understand um, first of all, what has been my life story up to this point um, from an emotional feeling standpoint, because that certainly has impacted, you know, some of our journey up to this point, whether we realize it or not. I did an exercise again when I was going through my Carlo program, it was called life mapping and it went back and like big, big moments in your life. You know, what were they? How are you feeling? And so it's interesting because definitely ties into the work that we've done is that when you go back and you think about some of these subconscious behaviors that were happening, whether that was you, whether that was somebody else that you were in a relationship with or a family member that definitely impacted you and your patterns. Right. So it's first the first level of, of all of this is just that awareness of what, what, what did that look like for you at this point? And how might that be impacting you now? If you yeah. do like, and the whole drama thing is that if we're feeling really heavy and we're feeling weighed down, you know, that means that there's something going on. We're out of alignment. And so really understanding that piece and then also understanding the very foundation. So I just touched upon at a very brief level of the, the empowerment dynamic and all that work, uh, but it's really spending time getting to know that. Once you can, once you can feel a little bit grounded in that, then the, then the next step is okay. What is my desired outcome? Like, what do I really want? So it could be anybody. You know, maybe I'm struggling in my career. Maybe I'm not really happy in the workplace where I'm working, and I'm just not feeling lit up. Um, maybe you know I have a bad relationship with my in-laws, or you know. Um, really struggling with just being a stay-at-home mom anymore and i really want to reinvent myself or i'm a state i'm a single dad who it applies to anybody so it's really helping you i would i really help you identify like okay what do you really want in the situation where you feel like you have the most drama and then how can we release this ties into some of the work we've done is really recognizing at a deeper level where is that coming from and how can i release that and let that go so I can free up that energy to move forward. Right, and I know part of what you're doing is helping people rewrite their story because that's essentially a lot of, you know, what we, when we look back on those times in our life and how we felt in that moment, when you can see it from a higher perspective, that's really where the shift starts to come in. And I, I know that that is uh, another big piece of your work is helping people to rewrite their story from an empowered place. Yeah. Yeah. So once we can do some of that work and, and this is never going to be a one and a done. I mean, you do this work. I do this work. It's 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 we're a work in progress. It, we're always evolving. And that's the really cool part about it. And when you can start feeling in alignment with who you are or who you want to be, um, you know, sometimes that happens. And that was what was happening with me. I was I felt like I was losing who I who I what fundamentally was. And to reconnect with that is is pretty cool. <laughs> it feels pretty awesome. Um, but it's also behavior change. And I always say this whenever I'm teaching a leadership class, you know, everybody comes in for the day and I'll say, okay, well, I'm going to share a lot of great things with you and we're going to have some good conversations. And when you walk out of that door, what's going to happen to this training book or what we talked about? And everybody's like, well, we're going to throw it away or well, we, go back to, we go back to regular life and we go back to, we operate, we often are operating on autopilot and our default old patterns and behaviors. And so we're, we're operating on autopilot versus intention. And so the, so the third phase when I'm working with my program is how do we rewrite our stories with action? Okay, so helping you really identify what do I really want? Where am I at right now? And what are the things that we need to do to help you fill in the gaps? And what's the sustainability piece on the back end to help you stay on a consistent path? Because once you start getting above that emotional, um, that vibrational scale that you were talking about, and you start feeling that you want more of that. And so how can I, how can we help you stay more on that positive trajectory to, to sustainable change and wherever that aspect is, you know, it could be a, it could be a monumental change that you want to make. It could be that I just want to improve my relationship again with, you know, my neighbor or somebody like that. Exactly. Yeah. As you release some of the heaviness and these drama roles and you start implementing that behavior change, you're able to create and to see things from a different perspective that you might not have seen before. So the outcomes can be, you know, different for everybody, whether it's you're starting a business or, you know, you're having a better relationship. So from what you're saying, I feel like there could be a lot of different outcomes because the person's elevating their consciousness and they're seeing things 
that they might not have seen before, which is really cool. Yes. And that's, and that's where I, yeah, this stuff is so applicable. And I think that that's for me, I kept feeling like something was really missing for me in, in the work that I was doing from that organizational level. And it, not that that doesn't still feed my soul to a bit. And I think it's important, but I just want to be able to, you know, really share this message and help people just from all, you know, wherever you're at, you know, you could be at the point where you're ready to say goodbye to your career. You know, you're at, you're at that verge of retirement, but what's next, what's next, what does that mean? And that can be a very, you know, scary place to be. And you can easily fall into, you know, that drama, triangle, drama, triangle dynamics in those roles. And it can be really hard to get out of it if you don't have that awareness. And I feel like having somebody like me to support them because change is scary for anybody. So having a coach is really imperative because, you know, you might have certain blocks that come up, like, you know, that you really want to change your career, but there's procrastination and there's all these other habits that are preventing you from actually even starting to work with somebody like you. So I feel like a lot of people will say, you know, okay, I want to make this change, but then they won't do it for years and years. What I feel like coaching does and having a guide is that it, it really accelerates the path and it helps that individual to see, okay, I'm getting in my own way here. And how do I step out of that so that I can move through these different layers that you were talking about to get to where I want to be? Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, I, I I can be a testimonial to that in working, you know, certainly the work that we've done together has been just life changing, game changing for me. Um, you know, I've worked with, you know, another coach before, I think just having that outside perspective, and also that thinking partner to help, like you said, just, you know, and I think that's what's the beauty and working with a coach for, for a, a set amount of time is they get to know you as an individual too. So they can, they can kind of pick up on like, okay, what's holding you back or where are you stuck? And they can come and they can ask some of those really good questions that'll be like, like all of a sudden, oh yeah, I never even thought about that. Or, um, so, and I, and I think often we associate coaching with, the corporate world, right? Like I'm a you know leadership coach, which is where my space has been. Um, but anybody can benefit from coaching. You know, we always go. To, a lot of times we go to coaching, like the team beach body coaching, or the you know the the from a health and wellness coaching. But do we don't always take the time to like look for somebody to help us from from our emotional spiritual being. Um, and I, that's that's huge. <laughs> Because it is like every area of life. And like you said, I love how you use the words, how you're showing up, because that's, that is how like the behaviors and the thoughts and the emotions that we feel do impact how we show up in the world. If we show up in that dreaded drama triangle or the empowerment, and it's about number one, having that emotional intelligence, being aware, and then taking those action steps to elevate so that you can live a life uh, that is fulfilling to you and in your words alignment i love that word because that's that's really what it's all about right we want to be aligned with our soul's calling we want to be you know f experiencing joy on a, on a daily basis and a lot of people right now are are not in those states so i love that you're here sharing this because you know now people know oh my gosh it's something clicked for me today i guarantee that somebody watching this today was like, oh my gosh, boom, light bulb moment. So yeah, I'm just so grateful that you came on and shared your wisdom. Do you have any anything else that you wanted to share? Yeah, we... I think just they I think the cool thing about working with somebody, you know, like both you and I, you know, I know I think why well, you and I clicked and resonated too, aside from you being a pharmacist and I grew up, you know, <laughs> in a family of pharmacists. Um is that we've been through a lot of this stuff. Like, I don't think either of us are here to say that we're perfect in any stretch of the imagination and that we're on that soapbox, like saying, you need to be doing this. Or it's, yeah. I think we, we've been on that journey. We're still on that journey. And we just want to share what's helped us become healthy. And I love that. I, I, I love that because it's genuinely coming from a place of caring. You know, you, can, you could ask my husband, you can ask my son, my daughter, I love them to death. And they would tell you that for every time I talk about Ted, they all will all say they know when I've been in the drama triangle and they've experienced it and they've been in it with me. <laughs> um, we're not perfect, but this definitely can help us on that path of finding, you know, some happiness and joy. And you know, one other thing is, you know, also owning who we are and celebrating that, you know, I, I, there are times when I used to get from, sometimes people would say, oh, you're too emotional or you're always acting on your emotions. Or I used to work at Disney, like you're too Disney. And that used to yeah. always like, 
you know, kind of play in my mind. And when I realized by doing this work and then the work that we've done, which has been really helpful is just like, but that's the power of it. Like to know where we, when we're not feeling great and where our emotions are and to be able to read that and know how, again, we're showing up and to be able to figure it out and to manage that to the best of our ability. So we're being our higher and better self, whether it's at work or with our families, friends, like that's huge. And I'm, I'm actually excited because now I'm, I'm proud of that and I own that and I step into that. And I think that that's, that's, that's such a huge part of uh, moving up that emotional scale because it's, it's about taking responsibility and, and owning who you are. I used to, my, my whole family was like, you're so sensitive. You cry all the time, you know, back before my spiritual awakening. But you know, it, it, that's, I own that now. I think my sensitivity is a huge gift. I'm able to channel things. I I'm intuitive. So I think that a lot of this journey is about owning your story, owning everything that you are. And that's where the self-acceptance self-love comes in and can really enhance every area of your life. Yeah. So the, yeah, this whole conversation just weaved in so beautifully and um, I just thank you so much for your your wisdom, your expertise. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? Um, so I do have a website. <laughs> um, it's www.marilysmith.com. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn. And certainly you can you can PM me uh, or friend me on Facebook. Soon I will hoping to be active on Instagram. I need to go through Instagram 101 through for my kids or somebody. Uh, but I, you know, on this journey, knowing that this is a little bit more of a shift for me, I'm hoping to look to do a little rebranding too. So I will keep everybody posted as perhaps I might change some of those things. But that's where I'm at now. So um, I would love to hear from you if you just want to chat and talk about like anything that resonated with you. Um, I am so open to that and, and would welcome it and would love would love to talk to you. That's awesome. I'm sure you're going to be getting a lot of private messages because this is such a great topic. So, all right, everybody. Thank, and I just want to thank you, Christina, um, just for all the work that you know you've you've been such a great support for me. Um, and you've challenged me and you've just really helped me open up to a whole nother. You really helped me step into feeling worthy and recognizing that and being confident. So I just really want that's your work is a big piece of why um, de I've decided to go down the path. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but you're, you're incredible. And I'm just so excited that your path is evolving in this way because this is your life's work and you're just shining. So I'm so excited. So awesome. Well, everybody, um, feel free to reach out to Mary Lee, like she said, um, and I will see you guys on the next Illuminated Feminine series. Bye-bye. Thank you.